go to YouTube is Gabriel, this is a fan TV. Back after another video, like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Ravens content coming at you daily. Uh, NFL talk, if you like hearing about the Ravens, if you like hearing about the NFL, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So today we're going to talk about, obviously, the game that happened last night. I want to talk about three standout performers from that game and kind of recap the game a little bit with you guys, man. So let's start off with three people that stood out. Now, a lot of Ravens had good games last night. So these three people that I named aren't the only Ravens that had good games. They're just the guys that jumped off the page to me. Um, so, you know, that that's where it is. Like a guy like, uh, let's say, Travis Jones had a good game last night, but he's not one of the guys that I mentioned, you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, a lot of guys had good games, all right? So Tyler Huntley had a good game as well. So the first of the three standout performers that I'm going to mention is um, I got to start with my favorite rookie, man. He made me proud last night, Isaiah Likely. Isaiah Likely was what I thought he could be, a mismatch nightmare, a beast in open field. I mean, he catches a flat route that uh, that Huntley puts him like four or five yards behind the line of scrimmage. He makes two or three guys miss and gets the first down. You don't see tight ends move like that. I mean, he's doing the dead leg like Lamar Jackson, like, you don't see guys move like Isaiah Likely at 6'4", 240 pounds. He's a special, special talent, and I love what I saw from him last night, game one. Um, now, I'm going to be honest with Isaiah Likely. The blocking wasn't good, you know, two holding calls, another five some first downs. But, listen, if Greg Roman puts Isaiah Likely out there on the field to block, we got an issue. We have an issue, Okay. Um, he's out there to play uh, a, a receiving tight end role, all right? Whether it's H-back, inline tight end, big slot. Put him out there, let him run a route, let him get open, let him make a play. Also, he showed uh, a nice, good game as far as uh, finding a spot in the zone and sitting down. So he kind of showed both. He, he finds a spot in the zone, sits down. Then he also makes a play, but he goes over top of a defender's head. He's showing you the both, uh, both sides of his game. Then he's showing what, you, what he could do with, with the ball in his hand. That run after catch ability was what was the part that really set him apart for me. Because when I watch his tape at Coastal Carolina and see somebody his size running away from linebackers and safeties, that's special. That's special. So Isaiah Likely, good first game. Build on it for next week. And uh, for, for next, I think the Ravens play next Sunday. So build on it for them, man. And just, just keep balling out, bro. Um, Next guy, Geno Stone. Now, Geno Stone had a really good game. Um, tackle for loss in the backfield, interception on the same drive, all over the field, make your plays. Geno Stone is a guy that where I think is this year is going to be a really big year for him. Especially with the Ravens playing more safeties, I think he'll actually get a chance to, to play on the field, even if there's multiple safeties on the field. He'll actually get that chance to play. He is a playmaker. He sees the ball, he goes get he go gets the ball, right? That's what I love about Geno Stone. Like what he does out there is before we got Marcus Williams, it was no it was no debate that Geno Stone was the best playmaking safety on this team. Like when they had when they struggled last year with Deshaun Elliott and Chuck Clark in coverage, they should have put Geno Stone out there more. Right? To me, he's a lock for the 53. He doesn't need to play preseason. I've seen enough of Geno Stone last year, the year before. He's a lock for the 53, and all he did last night was ball out, couple tackles, interception. He's around the football, so I love Geno Stone, bro. Love Geno Stone. All right. Now, lastly, another rookie, back on offense with this guy, Shamar Bridges, man. Shamar Bridges is a UDFA wide receiver. I've been mentioning him all training camp. I first heard about him. When I was in one of the Twitter spaces and somebody had mentioned that the Ravens had drafted a, a UDFA gem in Shamar Bridges. So I looked him up. Okay, HBCU product, Fort Valley State. Okay, like, let's see what he got when he got done on the field, all right? All you hear about at camp is he's the, he, he's the most consistent UDFA wide receiver. He's making plays every day. Um, you know, Shamar Bridges is a good talent. Big guy, good feet, good hands. And what does he do in his first game versus uh, the Titans? He shows all of those qualities. The Ravens haven't had a receiver that size that actually goes and attacks the football. 
Now, look, I'm not going to sit up here and bash Miles Boykin, right? But my biggest issue with Miles Boykin was he was a big guy that played small, right? Shamar Bridges is a big guy that plays big. He uses that 6'4 frame to go up and make catches. I mean, the touchdown grab went up, made a play. That's beautiful when you when you can have, when I think it was like a 17-yard touchdown, when you could just drop back, throw the ball up, and say, hey, go get it. We don't have to design nothing fancy, get this guy open, pick route here. No, no, just go up and get the ball, bro. That's that's great. Um, the, la the, 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 the second big catch he had, Tyler, no, I think that was Anthony Brown at, at that point. Anthony Brown just said, F it, I'm throwing, I'm throwing it down there. And Shamar Bridges said, okay, you're going to give me a chance. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a play for you. Um, so Shamar Bridges is, I think, by far my favorite UDFA wide receiver. He's been he's been in that for, for since, since, somebody, since somebody put me up on game on him, he's been my favorite UDFA wide receiver, and, he, and I'm glad that he showed improved last night. So those three guys are the stand up the performance for me. But I do want to kind of recap the game really quickly. So talk about some other things. So like, you know, the Ravens started off the game. Good touchdown by Mike Davis. Um, Falele had a good game. I think Falele played like most of the game, if not the entire game. So good game by Falele. I was worried about his conditioning. I love the fact that he was able to play the entire game there. Man. So good for Falele. Um, we got to talk about Tylen Wallace, man. Tylen Wallace gets hurt on the end of the round. I didn't see uh I didn't see most of the first half, so I'm, I'm going over highlights that I saw um, in people's comments. Um, Tylen Wallace apparently got hurt on the end of round. Um, John Harbaugh said it's a, it's a knee sprain right now. So that's just another setback for Tylen Wallace who's not having his best camp, bro. Um, hopefully he can recover, and we'll, we'll see what we get out of Tylen Wallace from there. All right. Um, let's see. Who else on offense? Okay, so another thing I liked about the offense, right? Second half, we saw a little bit of hurry up, right? Uh, with Anthony Brown at quarterback, I believe they, they converted a first or second down. Anthony Brown threw a nice, like, lofted pass to Riley Webb, and they got right in the hurry-up offense. I was like, oh, that's 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 different. Okay. I want to see that for the Ravens. The Ravens need to switch their tempo. Sometimes their tempo is too slow. So I don't know if that was just maybe they thought the ball was dropped. I mean, no, no, it was, a, it was like a clean catch, so I don't know why they did it. I'm hoping they did it because that's going to be a part of the offense and they're working on some hurry-up stuff because the Ravens need to be able to switch tempo, slow, fast, smooth. Like, they need to be able to switch tempos. All right. Makai Park was active in the second half, especially in the third quarter, had some catches. You know, another UDFA guy. So, shout-out to Makai Park. Um, not a Raven, but Malik Willis is electric. You know what I'm saying? Um, great talent, great ability, great feet. I, I, I loved watching Malik Willis play when he was out there. So, um you know, he scored on us. Hey, you know, I, I'm, I, I, hey, good play by Malik Willis. I love watching, uh, you know, black quarterbacks shine, prosper, especially when they get like these negative, um, reviews that don't really have anything to do with football. And it's, you know, it, it just stuff that just don't sound right. So Malik Willis, shout out to you, bro. Electric player, electric athlete, good quarterback. So shout out to you, bro. All right. Now defense, um, Kyle Hamilton from a recovery. Big play, you know, getting on the, getting on the ball, all right? Uh, but we also got to talk about, like I said, the Malik Willis touchdown. Kyle Hamilton missed a tackle. Steven Meade missed a tackle. Malik Harrison missed a tackle. The Ravens, y'all have to tackle, bro. Have to. We missed far too many tackles last year and the year before. The Ravens, you have to tackle. This is one of the things I like about Kyle Hamilton, right? Big, physical safety, you can get your body on you. Now, Malik Willis is slippery, he's athletic, I get all that. But, bro, we got to tackle. We got to tackle, all right? Um, pass rush was there all night, though. So we get back to the positive stuff. Pass rush was there all night. Steven Means with a stack, with a, with a sack, excuse me. Um, uh, Travis Jones with a sack, okay? Travis Jones has been putting on, has been putting out there on the practice field and pressing guys all camp. And he continues to do it today, um, uh, yesterday in the game, okay? We talked about Geno Stone and, and his and his impact with the, uh, the interceptions, the tackle for loss. But also, I mentioned on that play, Josh Ross with a deflection so that Geno Stone could come in and make the play. So, shout out to that rookie linebacker from uh, Michigan, Josh Ross. Uh, yeah, Josh Ross. Yep. And um, that's 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 the recap for the game. So, Ravens had some positives out there. They had a lot of positives out there. The guys played hard. They played fast. The preseason win streak is alive. I don't really care. But the preseason win streak is still here. So, 21 games in a row. You know, great. Don't get a trophy for that. But, you know. Hey, it's, it's, it is it's good to win. 
It's good to win. Um, a lot of positives out there. A lot of things to build on. And I, it was a good first game for these Ravens uh, backups and rookies and things like that. So just kind of keep building and, and see what we are at next week. I got to mention that James Prochet, update on him. He actually is hurt. Um, he has a soft tissue injury, kind of like Brandon Stevens, apparently. And James Prochet is going to miss a week or two. That's what Harbaugh said. So we won't see James Prochet all at all in the preseason, I would assume. And we got to hope he's back for week one versus Jets. The Ravens receiving core is looking really thin right now. Um, they're going to have they're gonna have to sign somebody, bro. I've been saying it all along. I want them to sign Will Fuller. I know well, well, we got injuries, so we're going to sign the guy that gets injured a lot. I know. I know. I get that. But to me, he's the best, most explosive option on the free agent market. And he makes sense. All right. Um, so we'll see what they do at wide receiver. And we'll, see, we'll go from there. All right, man. But look, Ravens had a good first game. Um... I love the effort, everything like that. A lot of stuff to build on, a lot of positives. So good game, Ravens. Uh, it's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.